Hi everyone and welcome. Happy Wednesday. I'm Marcy Bessaker, an independent demonstrator with Stamping Up. I appreciate you joining me tonight and tonight is bingo night. I am so excited about it. I am just getting everything ready and muted. Um, I've mentioned before I have to let my sound play while I'm listening to the intro so I know when to switch screens and then I have to mute everything but then you're already here watching me do it so you get to see a little behind the scenes of what what I have to do. I have been watching everybody say hi, welcome, and thank you. I missed the last few here. Um, I'm not going to go over everybody's names just because it is bingo night, and we know bingo night can get long. So um, I just want to say hi to everybody. Welcome, welcome. We have some new players tonight, so I'm going to quickly explain how bingo works and go over a couple of updates. And... Um, Oh, thank you, Leslie. And um, then we'll get busy. So I, I, I missed bingo. We were gone and we I missed bingo. We didn't have it in December. Um, big announcement is not a big announcement. I'll remind you guys. But I have decided that we are going to take off April and December for bingo. April is um, the incentive trip. The new annual catalogs coming out. Um, I can't do new catalog stuff in April. Things start leaving, you know, because the new catalog's coming and we're out of stock on some stuff. And I kind of revamp all my stamps and dies that month and it just gets a little too crazy for me. Um, so to keep my sanity, um, I'm going to skip April. And then December is just busy for everybody. And I think the last two years, if I remember right, we didn't do... Uh, December and I totally understand it is busy for everybody so let's relax in December and get our family stuff taken care of and spend time with them and then we'll jump back in with the new mini catalog in January each year. Today is my 27th anniversary but wasn't feeling well enough. Oh oh Annie I'm glad you're here and happy anniversary. My daughter's wedding anniversary is Friday I have a card I need to get in the mail. And then my son-in-law's birthday is on Monday. So. Oh, Paula. Okay, yeah. I'm going to go over everybody's numbers. If you need them, let me know. So, Paula, you need yours. Hold on, hold on. Um, Paula, 1, 4, 12, 23, 25. So thank you for those that signed up in December and then we rolled it to January. I really do appreciate that very much. Uh, freezing in South Dakota. Ooh, no, thank you. So I told you on Sunday my daughter was without power, still without power. So a friend of hers just up the hill has power but no water. And so my daughter, they picked up water and took it to them and they're up there uh, taking care of business while they can in um, electricity and then they'll be going back home. But whew, uh, you need your numbers, crystal, 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 three, five, 19, 21, nine. Uh, Barb, 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 four, eight, 15, 20, 26. Sherry. Five nine fifteen twenty five twenty seven. 15, 25, 27. Yay, Carla. Um, Carla, I do not have you registered unless it's under a different name. So if so, let me know. Uh, let's see. Mona. I'm guessing that's Ramona, right? It's coming up as a different name. I just want to make sure. If it is Ramona, three five seventeen twenty one twenty five. Oh, that was for Barbara. Okay, I think everybody's got their numbers that needs them. If you need them, still let me know. Uh, okay. So, and so just so you know, my, I have a screen over here. This is watching YouTube and watching the chat. And then this is my third party program that keeps us busy. That's why I'm looking at both places. Welcome, Ellen. 
Let's see, I want to make sure. I want to make sure everybody is on here. Ellen, Ellen, I want to make sure your name's on here. Yep, it is. Ellen S, right? Yep. Uh, this is my first time with you. Yes, Janine, welcome. I think I still have a few bingos left. So if you do go pay for bingo, um, I think there's three left. If you do, um, just make sure you give me your numbers, okay? I do get a notification that pops up that you've paid. Um, and so just let me know your number so I don't have to open up anything. Oh, Carla, you do and you still can. So when you go below, just link on the January bingo and make sure you um, register because that gives me your numbers and then pay right there. The other thing is um, I'm going to create a card first. So you have a little bit of time, but once I start bingo, then um, it's it's bingo time and then we can't uh, register anymore. Uh, oh, yes, yes, you are on there. Glenetta, I'm guessing that's how you pronounce it. Amazing Mona. So yes, you are on there and your numbers, I think you said you need them. So let me look. Here you go. Um, 22, 1, 15, 12, and 24. I'm going to write there, Amazing Mona, so I know. Sometimes you guys have um, different names, and then I, I'm terrible at remembering. Oh, thanks, Rosie. Uh, do you have my numbers for December? Yes, Rose. Um, your numbers are 10, 13, 14, 19, and 21. Yay, Dana. I'm glad you made it home, too. Okay, so I'm gonna explain bingo a little bit. So how it works is you register. For example, February's bingo is already open for registration. There's a link below, there's a link on my blog, and I will be putting a link out onto my Facebook, my business Facebook page, which is Marcy Bessaker Designs. So once you register, then you're gonna scroll down farther. So when you go into my blog, if you go into classes bingo and click, um, don't just add it to the cart. Click the text below the, the picture and that will open up your registration form and give you details about bingo. Once you fill out the registration, you pay below. If you fill out the registration and you forget to pay or you want to come back to that, then you can go and just add it to your cart. But I have to have your registration. I need your address to send your kits to. I need your um, numbers to play bingo. So uh, once you're in the system, some, sometimes if you just um, pay and you don't register, just know it's going to the address I already have on file and I'm going to use your old numbers, but I still have to go look up your numbers. So if you just pay in bingo, um, add your numbers in the note section. That helps me a lot because I know you're paid, I mark it, and I copy your numbers in. Um, registering is the easiest for me because then I have all your information in case something changes. All right, so once you register and you, you'll get um, a receipt. In your receipt, there is a CSV file that's attached to your receipt. You can always click on that attachment and it shows your form, which shows your numbers. So you can also grab your numbers from there before bingo, just so you have them, um, or I don't mind giving them to you because I know sometimes you're not always at home or I've had time to look them up. So don't worry about that. Um, I then um, print out everything. I get everything ready. I have your packages, your bingos ready to go. I do not mail out your kits ahead of time, number one. It's my proof, proof, proof that your stuff is in there. I have somebody help me. So we're both working on, you know, different parts of the bingo to get them packaged. And so I like to just make sure everything is in there before I ship them. That way you have everything. So tonight, the kits I use are exactly what are being mailed to you. So if I'm missing something, I can fix it tonight and mail it off tomorrow. The other reason is I want you to relax and have fun and chat and play bingo. Pay attention to how I'm creating the projects because you know how sometimes you think, oh, I know how to do this. And then I may change it up or do something that's not quite what you expected. But by seeing a video ahead of time, uh, you're going to be like, oh, wait, I know she did this instead of this, or she used this color or that color. Um, Katie, I'm going to need your numbers, please. Um, so that is the way to um, 
you're going to get the kits after. So even by registering today, you do not have to worry about it because um, we're just create, creating and playing bingo. So when I play bingo, I have numbers in my little bucket right here. So I will pull out a number and I will set it down. We're going to do it facing downward. And as soon as I call this number, if it's your in your numbers, you're going to put a B in your comments, okay? And B. And then, then I would type B I and B ready. As soon as I call the second number, if it's your number, or the eighth number is your number, it's your second number, then send B I. My numbers now I have a pen. Okay, Sherry, hold on one second. And then you're going to keep going, especially when you get to the end, B I N G O. So that's your five numbers, okay? B I N G O. When it's on your fifth one, you're going to make sure you have typed B-I-N-G-O and ready to go. Because as soon as I call that last number and it's your number, you want to hit enter right away because you want to beat everybody else. There is one winner per bingo, but I will give a consolation prize to the second one that calls bingo. Okay, so if you're first or second, you're going to get a consolation prize or you're going to win bingo. Bingo is a $100 prize which is shopping in my store. So you're going to email me your order of what you would like. Um, ideally, if you want to do a $150 order, that gives you your host now. So not only are you getting, you're only paying the $50. Um, I, I pay your first hundred. So whatever the balance is over, you're going to pay. I will invoice you. You'll pay it. I just give you a screenshot of your, um, your numbers. And then I invoice you and once you pay it, I submit the order and it's shipped directly to you, okay? Um, if you uh, want, you could do whatever you want. Just know that the first 100 is what I pay, okay? Um, and that is about it. And then you're gonna get your kits and you can just create at your leisure. I put a timestamp down below and it'll say project one, project two, project three, and so on. And then you can come back and create and you can skip all the bingo and chit chat and just go to the projects. Um, and then you can create along with the video. So uh, that's how that works. Last week I cased your card. Let's use up that extra DSP OMG, what narrow borders, but I did it. Sent it to my mom and she loved it. Oh, that is great. Yeah, the 1 8 allows me to put that little extra color on there. Um, I used to do quarter, quarter ones, but I really like the main image to be a little bigger. So I started doing one eighth to just give a little bit of color and um, I really, I really like that. All right, so um, let's see. Sherry, you needed your numbers. Do, 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 do. Okay, uh, 5, 9, 15, 25, 27. And then Katie on here, if you, um, I need to get your numbers. Uh, let's see. Hi, Ramona. Hi, Tashana. All right, so Katie, I just need your numbers. You just signed up for bingo. I just want to make sure I get your numbers. I don't have them with me right here. All right, so um, we are going to... So that's it about bingo. If you have any questions about bingo, let me know. Um, I do, oh, good, Katie, thank you. Two, five, 19, 20, whoop, 25, 28. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, the other thing I was gonna tell you, hmm, it was on the tip of my tongue. Okay, but oh, let me look at my list here. Okay, I already said fe February bingo is up for your thank you cards. So I kind of decided instead of always doing a thank you card, um, I'm going to kind of change it up and just put an inspirational card in there for you. So it might be something I'm working on for something else. It might be something that I um, created just for the bingo. And um, so I'm not going to write in them anymore um, unless you want them written in, which I don't know why you would. But um, I'm going to put a little note inside just so you can kind of show it to your customers if you need to or have it for inspiration for yourself because I do have a lot of demonstrators that play. Um, hi, Twyla. How are you? I am glad you watch. We have some fun cards tonight. All right. Uh, the other thing is, uh, so here we go. February bingo really quick. It is up and ready for registration. So you can start registering for that. 
And then don't forget that I still have the B class available. When I do an online class, it is kind of the same. You can go and play at your leisure. And um, I'm going to, the, the, the date of the 27th is just, that's the date I need to get everything to you. So I make sure I ship it before then. And then that way um, you'll have a vi private video link, a PDF if there is a fancy fold or something that um, needs a PDF, and your kits. And then you can create. So um, the, that is still available and I still have um, some of those. Uh, somebody just posted, sorry I was typing to register and pay before I lost my chance to grab the list of kits available tonight. Sorry I was typing the registration and before I pay, lost my chance to grab the last of kits available tonight. No, I think you, I think you got one, Katie. I, I haven't looked, but there's, there should have been three left. So, and I think I only had one other person. Let me look at my phone. No, if you paid Katie for it, it shows you paid, then you got a kit, okay? Because um, it will not allow you to purchase if there aren't any left because I went in and I changed the number that's available. So you're good to go, Katie. All right, let me make sure. Thank you, Carol, for signing up for November. Oh, that's okay, Katie. All right, I am going to get started. So if you need to um, ask me a question, just kind of, you know, write big so I can see it. And let's get Biddy, B Biddy, let's get Biddy. I'm so excited. All right, the first card I absolutely love. Like, I love this card. And in person, it's so much better. But look at this card, ready? Look how pretty that is. And we, we're not doing all Valentine cards. Look at how pretty that sparkles. It is so pretty in person. So what I want to say is I was creating these cards before we ran out of or this gold retired. I might have bought a little bit for bingo. So you guys will have all that in your bingo. So don't worry about it. Um, so let's get busy and I'll show you how to create this card. So this is really, it's a nice fun fold. It's really easy. Um, I'm going to tell you the measurements just quickly, quickly. So if you are ready, I'll give them to you. I don't normally do this for bingo, but I'm going to really fast. Uh, you are going to do a card eight and a quarter, which is this one, by four and a quarter, and you're going to score it at two and three quarters. Okay, eight and a quarter, four and a quarter, scored at two and three quarters. All right, then you're going to take a piece that is six and three quarters by three and three eighths, six and three quarters, three and three eighths, and you're going to score it at three and three eighths. Okay, Kathy, I'll get your numbers in just a minute. Um, and then just go down, the, the, I'm not going to give you all of them, but that's the main one. I just go down an eighth of an inch on the white. Um, so you have plenty of time, uh, space to write. And then I go down, uh, I don't even remember what I did. I went down, uh, this is normal. So it's going to be uh, four, let me make sure. This is the only one I think I'm going to give you measurements on. Well, no, not really. Four by five and a quarter in the gold. And then this is going to be just a quarter of an inch smaller than that. So um, it kind of gives you an idea. Okay. Um, Kathy. Kathy Garrett. Let me see. Let me see. Kathy, Kathy, Kathy. Uh, 26, 11, 18, 15, and 4. Hi, Caroline. How are you? All right. So here we go. Uh, when you play bingo with me, your bows will be made. These are die cut. This is embossed. Really, the only thing you need to do is do your sentiment. And I did this one early today because, you know, we're doing YouTube and bingo is a long night. Um, and I am, I gold embossed that. So let's just get busy. So this is what your kit's going to look like. Everything will be in there. No, Gloria, I usually don't do measurements for bingo because you get the product in hand. So like you could take this and you know, measure your little piece. Oh, this, yeah, it goes like this. And you're going to, you know, you can write it down. So it's a three and, uh, 
three and an eighth. And so you can just kind of write down your measurement. So I really don't unless it's kind of like a, a really detailed thing. Um, because bingo, I kind of go a little crazy on bingo already. So there's your sentiment and there are your gems. Bingos usually are kind of like a quick, you know, little easy kind of thing, but eh, you know. So you're gonna have this big piece of gold. Um, if you are wanting gold, since you can't get this any longer, um, you could die cut something out of that, okay? So this is gonna be on the inside. I call it our inside. So it's gonna be this right here is what we're doing. This is already embossed. All of the supplies are listed below. Um, this one, I believe it is called Softly Sophisticated. It's an embossing folder. So because it's fairly flat on the back, I don't mind using seal. Usually when it's embossed, I like to use liquid glue, but I'm gonna do this first. And because it's flat, however, it's going onto adhesive, so I will be using some glue. Let's see if I can get this one. To... And I'll double check and make sure if anybody needs their numbers before we play our first bingo. I haven't used this glue today, so I want to make sure it's... There we go. I like to just do that to make sure it's going to stay. And I can tell you right now I just made one mistake. Can anybody guess what it is? because I forgot I like to put these on first, but we'll just make it work. All right, so we're gonna put the um, plaid part up. So just center it, oops, it's not edge to edge, so just center it. Okay, now remember that the, the back ha is it has adhesive, okay? And I do go edge to edge because this gold is gonna line up with this gold, and then this gold is gonna line up to that gold. So um, this is gonna go to edge to edge, but your plaid is centered. So we're going to go ahead and take, see if I can get it off. Okay, so be really careful. It should not be hard to get off, but you want to make sure you don't take off the sticky part. So we're going to do that. But I like to add a little bit of glue only because everything else is kind of adhered to this. And I'm just going to add a little down the center because it is on top of um, an embossed piece. And so I went up. I mean, it really doesn't matter, but I did it like a third of the way up. So just line your paper up so you're going on a line right there. And I'm just going to make sure it's aligned up on that line also. Except I'm going a little crooked here. I feel like I'm rushing, so i got to slow down a little bit here. There we go. And you can also look at the pieces uh, on here. You're on the, look at the design and that kind of tells you where it's at too. Hi Kathleen, how are you? All right, so we're gonna go ahead and add this in again. This has adhesive also. I think this is a little tiny bit long. There we go. So you can just pull that up. I wish we still had this available, but we don't. Again, I'm just gonna add a little bit. I just like to really make sure it's not gonna go anywhere. And we're just gonna center that. Right there. All right, so that one we can set aside. Now we're gonna come in with our red and our sentiment on the inside. 
with all my heart and I forgot to put that on to well now I am wondering which stamp set I grabbed that from I forgot I did the inside so we're gonna do the inside in a minute because I have to pull out my my uh, my stamp set that I used it with all right so we're gonna go ahead and adhere this right onto here and you want the gold hearts oh thanks thank you I'll try to <laughs> I always feel like bingos last so long and I always think, oh, these poor people. I always just have to do it so crazy. Crazy projects. My husband always laughs at me like, why do you do them so long? All right, so if anybody can tell me uh, where with all my heart comes from so I can just grab it and not go look for it, that would be fantastic because, oh, it's right here. Silly me, look at, with all my heart. Yay, that's all my heart right here, the one that's used. And here I thought it was being really good. Everything is all ready to go. And I forgot this one. And it's gonna be in real red. So let's go ahead and stamp that now. I have my little, my silicone mat here next to me because I love it. All right, so let's Stamp this with all my heart. There we go. Here, we'll just look that up there. All right, so let's put that in. All right, remember when you're putting this in, it's gonna go in on the left side. I haven't put anything on the front yet. So it's gonna go on this side. Now, if you had more gold paper, you could definitely trim this down and put the gold behind it. But I don't like to make the cards too terribly thick because I wanna make sure that you, um, you know, you don't have to pay extra postage unless you want to, which sometimes I do. All right, then this one is gonna go there. And remember that this one has um, adhesive on the back. And if you look at the card, know that we're not tying a bow around it or anything. So I like to put all my panels on as I go. Um, that Celtic Blue Carol was so great. Yes, it did. I used it on all my Christmas cards, Robin. Hopefully they do bring it back. That would be fantastic. All right, so we're gonna lift this. Just make sure it is adhesive paper that you're pu pulling off. And again, I'm just gonna do, I just do a little light, a little extra support. All right, I'm gonna start over here because I know it's just gonna fit. Smooth that out. All right, so now we're gonna go and we're gonna do our layer, this layer right here. So again, see, so you, you guys can tell I bought a lot of the gold paper. Unique I did too. I bought a ton of that, but I used so much of it for the Christmas that it is, I have a lot of it gone. I think I still have some silver, so you may see it in projects coming up because, you know, a lot of us still have that old silver or gold paper, so I say use it up. Sometimes it just goes perfect on a project, right? All right, so this one is gonna go over here. So let's put that on. Oops, gold again. So we can take this off. How nice. Oh, thank you so much, Katie. All right. So just add that on there. I like to just make sure the gold lines up on the top and the bottom. So this is gonna go on the inside. This is gonna go here. So what I like to do, don't worry about this part right now. Take this and just put it right in the center. Um, just kind of you know gauge it where you want it to go because remember when this opens up and goes in, this is your centerpiece. So 
we are going to add this. And because it's a moving part, I also am going to add a little bit of glue. I don't like to add too much glue because it does make your cards thicker and heavier. But I do like that little extra support. Again, this is going on an embossed piece. And our glue just works so well. I just like to put some on there because I know it's going to stay. So I just eyeball it. I don't measure or anything. I just kind of, if it looks in the center, then that's good for me. All right, so there's that. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna work on our hearts. So you should have three hearts. Make sure, you know, there's usually one a flat spot and this is where it kind of curves from where the die cutting went. And now you're gonna have this and there's three die cuts on there, see those? So we have to be really careful. Um, I didn't pull them all out like this because some of them didn't cut all the way through like this. However, um, you can always just peel the sticker part up because it definitely, it definitely did it. But what I like to do is I like to start peeling it up, but I like to poke all the other stuff down if possible so it doesn't stick. So just kind of try to peel that little piece up but you're going to have little pieces still that need to come up and they're hard to see. I just kind of do the best you can to get all the extra little bits to stay down if you can. And then I just peel the rest. But see if you can keep some of them off, but you're going to see that there's a lot on here. So just have them go onto your finger if you have to just it's just easier to than to stick on the back of your little piece that you want and they come off they're not that terrible but I've walked out of the room with them all over my shirt or my arms and then if you turn it over you can see if you have any more and then See, now you'll have this. So I just try to get them all together. So you can throw them away. Okay, so that is heart number one. And then what you're gonna do is they don't go all the way to the edge, they go in the center. So I take a pokey tool or something like this and hold it there. And this just kind of lay it on where you think is the center or close. Just get your tip at the bottom to be right on the tip there. And then, and then push it on. Okay. Uh, let's see. Oh, thank you so much. I would love a thumbs up, you guys. Thank you. All right. So we're going to do two more like that. And again, without the sticky, you can see those on the back. And so you could also do it like this um, if it did cut through all the way. But some of them are a little tricky and then they don't go all the way. So you can do it from the front. But this will give you a head start. And see how this one, it got stuck on the paper. So you want to be really careful with that sticky stuff. All right, so get all those off if you can. And then we'll peel it off. All right, again, you should have three different designs. And then you can always just kind of move them. Okay, so there's another one. And then our last one. I guess I could have weeded these out first, but kind of gives you an idea of what, how to do it. Like I said, if they are 
cut all the way through. Some of them were a little trickier. And you just want to make sure you get those all off. All right, and then we're going to peel that. There we go. Can. All right, so there's our three hearts. And then our sentiment. Oh, yeah, Tashana, it's not. I'm hoping they bring it back because I love it. All right, so there we go. There's our three. We're going to pop those up with dimensionals. Look, I still have gold on my hand. So we've got to have them all pop up. and our sentiment. All right. So you can put them wherever you want. I'm gonna start with the top one up here on the corner. Oh, Twyla, I'm so sorry. All right, so you want to make sure it's, you know, it's on, on just this panel here so it's easy to maneuver. And we're going to put our sentiment there in a minute. So I did all of the hearts first, and then I just kind of snuggled the sentiment in there. So then let's put this one, like, right here. And I'm going to lightly put it. Just drop it there. Don't push it down. Just so we can kind of get our sentiment where we want it. I'm going to lightly put that one right there. This one, I'm going to, I want to snuggle it in under here. I want the hearts to show. But right here. Okay, so that all works fine for me. And then we're going to get our bow. How do you change it to live chat? Oh, at the top where it says top chat and then live chat. You want to make sure it's on live chat. At the very top of the chat, there's a drop down. All right, so we want to make sure that we Thanks for the reminder, Robin. Um, I put a dimension or a glue dot in the middle, but then I like to add just a little bit of glue on the side because I don't like my bows to fall off. Sometimes when you get them in the mail, your bow falls off. And I'm just going to turn it just enough to where I can still see my sentiment. Okay, so you still see the sentiment. And then we have these three little pearls here. The larger one I put right over here. And then I put a small one over here. And you can move this heart back over a little bit more. See, it, this one kind of ended up a little close. I'm going to show you how to fix that. So I'm going to take that back off. I'm going to put it up here, actually. And I'm going to show you how to fix that heart. Use your scissors. Go in there and just cut your dimensional. Okay? Don't try and pull it off because you're going to make your shape of your project, of your item get all wonky and then just rub those off okay just rub those dimensionals off and we're gonna put fresh ones and move it where we want it okay same thing here I just rub them off but you have to just kind of get a part of that sticky and then it'll rub off all right there we go just like new and we're gonna move it a little bit better Put new dimensionals. 
that is one of the best tricks I learned some long time ago. But because uh, I sometimes I do try to pull it off, but it can really mess it up. So you don't want to do that. All right. So now just kind of put it there and out here a little bit. There we go. So it kind of fills that up a little bit. That's better. And now we're going to take this one and just put it over there. All right. So there we go. Isn't that pretty? It is a very sparkly card in person. I just love it. This is extra. You don't get that. <laughs> so really pretty. And if this is not enough here to do your writing, then you can always add a panel in the back. Okay. So absolutely beautiful. So that is card number one. Ooh, ooh. I'm glad you guys like it. All right, so card number one is done. Are you guys ready for bingo? Does anybody else need their numbers? Let me know. Oh, thank you, Marilyn. Thank you, guys. Oh, absolutely, Marva. You sure can. Oh, speaking of, I have cards, you guys, and I will show them on Sunday. I've gotten a lot more cards um, for Christmas, and I think I got an anniversary card and some thank you cards, so I'll show those. All right. I don't see anybody else needing their numbers. So everybody should have a B typed ready to go in the chat. And thank you guys for your thumbs up. I appreciate it. All right. Number 28 is our first number. Good luck, everybody. Remember that um, there's a little bit of a delay for those that are new. There's a little delay. I use closed captions and that does put my video behind even a little farther than what it used to um, before I did closed captions. But I know a lot of people need closed captions. So um, thank you for being patient for that. Number 24. I go a little faster at the beginning because you cannot get bingo without the... Uh, five numbers anyway, so once people start getting close, I'm going to move these cards behind me here. Number nine. Number nine. Oh, lots of bees. Lots of bees, no BIs yet. I put my card away and then I realize I want to keep it over here to show it at the end. All right. All right. Carol has a BI. All right. Number 27. Get a little sideways here. 27. Whew, there's a lot of bees. Number 23. Remember, it's the first person that calls bingo. It does not matter if their number or last number has passed and if another number has been drawn, okay? Because of the lag and people coming in after work and different things. Number eight, it is the first person that calls bingo. I had a person once message me and said, I had bingo before the person that called bingo, but I, I can't go back and read everybody's numbers. So you got to be present. Number 30, you have to say bingo. So Carol, Sherry, Leslie. Oh, there's a lot of BIs. Olivia, Robin, Kathy, Barbara, you all have BIs. Oh, Carol has a BIN and Robin. 21. Thank you guys so much for playing bingo. Number 22. 
Number one. Kathy and Eileen also have BIN. Number 18. Number 17. Oh, Margie, you no, know, this is our first bingo, so you just missed the first card. Glad you made it. Margie, I'm going to give you your numbers because I believe I had to pull them from last month. So if you have a pen, 25, 3, 28, 24, 7. I'll read them again if you need, to, need me to. Ooh, Jill has a BIN. Glory has BIN. Stephanie and Leslie. Number 13. Number 11. Jill and Carol. Ooh, Eileen has a B-I-N-G. Number 19. Ooh, three B-I-N-Gs. You guys be ready. Now I slow down a little bit. But remember, I'm going to be calling the next number, so it doesn't matter as long as you're on there. Number 12. Lots of B-I-N-G's. One, two, three, four, five, six. Sure, Margie. 26 is next. Margie, 25, 3, 28, 24, 7. Kathleen, you don't have to type in your name, honey. Just put your put B I together. Put your letters together. B I. Barb has a B I N G. All right, the next number is 20. The other thing to know is when you do win bingo, you must give me your order in the same month. Okay, it needs to be in the same month. You're welcome, Margie. Fifteen. I think we're going to go through all our numbers. Number 22. More B-I-N-G's, Barb and Crystal. Planetta, B-I-N-G for Kathy. Oh, Planetta has it. Let's take a look. All right, we have 22, 1, 15, 12, and 24. Congratulations. Yay. Yay, yay, let me write that down. Number one, bingo. Congratulations. 
All right, it's the only bingo I see. All right. Congratulations. Make sure everybody has their live chat on so you are up and current. All right, so you just need to email me your order of what you would like, and the first $100 is on me. Yay! All right, I am calling it over. I don't see any other ones. So I'm going to shake them up for next time. Can I just pay for the card kits and do the bingo tonight? Uh, Renee, if there are any left, um, down below there is a link for January's um, January's uh, bingo. You can go ahead and order it now. And you can even give me your numbers and do only three bingos if you choose. But it's the same price because if you guys realize my classes are also $40. So just so you know, um, that's really the cost. Because we can't charge you for bingo. We can't charge you to, it's not gambling, right? So um, it's really you're paying for the card class. And so um, bingo is just like an extra fun part of it. So um, anyway, yes, you can. If Renee, just go ahead and pay below and uh, give me your numbers and you can pay play for the next three bingos. But the first one, of course, won't count. Oops, I almost forgot three. All right. And a lot of times people show up and they, they can't make it because they're after work or whatever. So, all right. Project number two is another one I just love. And it's got some technique to it. It's going to be a lot of fun. So here's project number two. Isn't that pretty? It's got some more dazzle on it, which of course we love dazzle, right? So let's get started. Here is project number two. We're going to be using some blends and some ink. We're using Lost Lagoon ink. We're going to use the Postal Perennial. And so we're going to be using the lavender uh, postal, uh, the painted lavender and the perennial postage. And of course, I have given you everything. If you don't have the set, and that's kind of one of the things about my bingo, um, is I give you everything except the sentiment for the most part. Some of the things you might, not, might need to color and you just use whatever, whatever color uh, technique that you want or um, blends or markers or whatever. I'm going to move all that over right now. We're going to do the inside. So here is the card and then here is the inside. Okay, so let's do the inside now. Again, I've told you guys, I like to bring in my silicone mat. Um, this set is out of stock. Oh, it'll be coming back. I believe it is because the, no, let me think. I think it's one of the dyes. One of the, I think it's this dye right here, the painted lavender. So if the sweet is out, you can still buy the bundle. So let me explain the sweet. The sweet tells you that like this one, and this one here is a bundle. And then there's a stamp set with this and the dies. That's a bundle. And then you can get the paper. The only thing you won't be able to get are these dies. They're out. So maybe wait on getting this bundle because you do save 10%. But you can still get 10% off of this. Buying the suite just bundles it all together for you. But you're still only getting... 10% um, off on the bundles. So if you want 10% off on this bundle, wait on it, but you can still get this bundle, get your 10%, get your paper, everything else in it. Okay, so I think it was just those dies, if I remember correctly, that are out. Okay, all right, so what we're going to do is we are going to take our inside piece and we are going to attach our DSP. And I do it right on my glass mat, except I'm, we've got a lot of crafting to do after this uh, card, so I don't want to have to sit here and clean my mat. So somebody had asked me recently, do I really need a silicone mat with the glass mat? Yes. 
Um, mine is tiny, tiny bit shy. So when I, that happens, you know how when you go right to the fore, if you're right before it or right after it, or sometimes you cut this side of the paper and the other side of the paper might just be a sliver shy. So I like to do it like that. When my card base is colored, I don't always add another line, another line of color. Um, it's totally up to you. Um, so I don't always do that. So we're going to put that on there. So I need my... And Renee, if you can tell me your numbers so that I don't have to go look it up, that would be fantastic. And I'll write them down. And let's see. The dies are what's not available. Right, Melanie, that's exactly right. When there's one item not available, so let's say it's the embellishments, because that's the most of the case, is if it's the embellishments, you can still get both of your bundles if there's two, like in this case. Um, so you can get both your bundles for 10% off each. You can still get your DSP, but then you'll have to go back and get the embellishments. And so you're still paying the exact same price. Okay, just so you're aware of that's how that works. All right. And so now I just need to trim off my little piece here. And we'll glue that in. And you'll notice on um, in the description below if you need to go and look for some items on what I'm using. So I do use a few items that are retired. For example, circle punches. Um, there's, if there's something that's retired, I still try to list it for you because for the most part, you probably still have it in your um, supplies. I see the more dazzle paper is running low in inventory, but in the annual catalog. So, so I can't, it's behind the heart. I can't see it around till April. Yes, it should be around till April. If it's in the main catalog, it should, it should be coming back. I, it better because I want more. All right, so there's the inside. The outside, I take a look at. I do a lot of stuff on top of here, so this is okay. I'm gonna go ahead and add that on here too. I like to just kind of start adding all my things together if I can, if I'm not going to put a ribbon around it or a bow, you know, a twine or anything like that. Thank you guys, I have 120 watching right now. I would love a thumbs up. I do appreciate it very, very much. It helps my channel. All right, so we're gonna do that. The next thing is we are gonna just put these on here for now and set them aside. But let's go ahead and stamp our sentiment. And I chose uh, You're Simply Marvelous. It just fit nicely there. And you can you know, put happy birthday inside or congratulations or you know whatever you'd like. You know what I really like is this. Look, this is what I've got going on. I've got my glue laying down, which is nice because um, it's not gonna roll off the table. It's in my silicone mat, which I just love. All right, I even give you guys a little white piece of paper, but obviously if you wanna change it up and do something different, you sure can. Look at your solid words that are straight, not the cursive, and try and get it on there as straight as you can. If you look at the, the cursive one, it gets a little, um, Sometimes it's a little harder to see if it's straight. And I don't even think I got mine that straight. Let me see. No, I'm going to redo it. It does not look straight. I just wiped this with a wipe, so I like to make sure I... Okay, i got to look at my words here. All right. Now my head's probably in the way. Sorry. I'm trying to focus. And now it's even worse. Look at that. Okay, so we're going to go with this side because... We don't have time to straighten it out. That's why I like to stamp first and then cut after, but it's all right. But we're going to fix it. Hold on. I just, I can't have crooked. So this is, but I try to give you guys paper. Um, one and seven eighths by one. One and seven eighths by one. So we're just going to, 
stamp it here and then I'll just make it work. Okay, it still seems like, I think my stamp and my sticker might be kind of off because I hope I'm not that bad. All right, so we're gonna cut that down. And then I don't know, um, Renee, I need to get your numbers too before bingo starts. All right, so I'm gonna trim this side because it's fairly close. And then I'm gonna go to one and seven eighths. So I'm gonna go right to there. And by one. But I'm gonna get closer. And this is where I kind of straighten it up a little bit and then go to one. And that's good enough. All right, that looks straighter. Sorry. Why would I want to make this beautiful card with a crooked sentiment? All right, so we're going to use that one. So we're going to set that over there with that. And now I'm going to bring in my grid sheet because we're going to do some coloring with alcohol. So I definitely don't want it to get on my glass and, and move around. Okay, Renee, 9, 12, 17, 26, 29. Okay. Hi, Donna, how are you? All right. So what I did is I gave you two branches here with shaded spruce, okay? And then I gave you two of the flower pieces from the painted lavender. Okay, so what I wanna do first is I'm gonna bring in, and I used the light shaded spruce, the light fresh freesia, and the light berry burst. Okay, oh, it's kinda of hard to see, but oop. there we go. They're all light. Shaded spruce, fresh freesia, very burst. We're going to start with the shaded spruce and I like to use the larger end on this and I'm just going to go on with the green and just kind of get make sure it's on there and you have it green everywhere. Remember that in between here you want to make sure you get your stems. Okay this I think is a leaf so I am going to color that shaded spruce also okay and then I'm going to come over here and you want to kind of hold it you don't want to get your flower all green right and then right in between these that to me that looks like it's a part of a stem and then I'm going to go to the top and that is a stem Okay, you want to get your edges too. You don't want your edges to be white if you can help it because it's going to go against a little bit of a darker background. All right, so that one's good. Now I'm going to do this one and we're going to go right here. This one has a stem going out to it. Okay. So just kind of look all the way down the flowers and we're like, okay, that, okay, you know what? I'm going to come closer. There we go. It's a little hard to see, I know. All right, and then just keep going. So in between each flower, it seems like there's a little bit of a stem. And then down here. Okay, so there's our green. That looks pretty good. You, and, you, and you'll see later, like when you put it on here, if you see any white, you know, around where your green should be, especially down here, um, you want to make sure that that's colored in. Okay, so the next part, what I did, is I'm going to take Fresh Freesia. And for the most part, I'm going to do the bottom of the flowers. Now you could do the bottom or the middle or however you want to do your flowers. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the, um, you know what, white on white is hard to see. Let me see. You are correct. Let me put a piece of black under here. 
Okay. Now, um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go down on the bottom part, part of the flower. You want most of the flower to be fresh freesia. That's what I did. I mean, you can color them whatever you want. And don't blend into your green, but right up to it. Okay. So just I just did kind of the bottom because I just wanted it to be two-tone. Bring in some other color. All right, so there's that one. I hope that's better. You guys can see it better. You are Dolores. Just make sure you grab that bar and pull it all the way over to the right so you're current and make sure it says live chat at the top. All right, so I'm missing a little bit of that um, leaf right there. So I'm going to take the little bullet tip here and kind of go down a little because I was, I, there was like a stick sticking up there. All right, same thing. We're going to go right here and that actually could have been a, a stem too I missed it okay so there we go and then just again do the bottom portions and I do about three quarters if not more of the flower because you're gonna that darker is gonna come in and it's going to be dark so you just want to have tips of that all right so there's that and you're still going to use this so let's get the berry burst first light again and now you're just going to come in and just kind of do a little bit and you can kind of come down in your purple a little bit in your fresh freesia to blend it and you're going to see it looks pretty harsh, and that's okay because we're going to come back in with the fresh freesia and kind of blend it a little bit. Okay. So just kind of, just to give it some depth, give it a different color. Like I said, if you wanted to, you could make it to where the base has just a little bit of the dark, the darker and do the rest of the flower light, whatever you want. But I just, you know how you see those flowers and they have the tips that are, you know, a little darker. So I just decided, okay, I'm going to try and do it just a little bit of each color. And then we're going to blend it and it's going to look a lot better. So hold on. I like to hold it with my finger so you can kind of just get exactly where you want to go because otherwise it kind of moves around easily. Make sure you get on the edges. My kitty's out there meowing. Okay, now, oops. Oh, look. <laughs> uh, uh. All right, so come back in with the fresh freesia and you can just kind of blend it just blend a little bit it doesn't have to be but it just kind of bleeds the lines a little bit together i don't i don't go back over the freesia to make it darker i just do like a line so you can tell that the colors are kind of it looks like it's three so see how it's like it goes like light and then it just gets darker and it's a little darker at the top but it just blends a little better instead of just that harsh line. And I just kind of wiggle it on there. All right, so there's our flowers, simple. And now we're just gonna put it together. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our card and let's go ahead and just kind of put our gold piece down. And you're gonna have a lot layered up on that, so I put a little extra there. And you wanna have it kind of down, so kind of think about where your, see how it's really not halfway, but more than half? 
So now you want to kind of have it down because think about, don't put it down yet. Get your, get your branches here and just kind of get an idea of where you want them to be. So laying that on there is a really good idea. It just kind of gives you kind of your idea of where you want it to go and then just kind of pick your center and there you go. Now you're going to take your Lost Lagoon piece. I'm going to put dimensionals because we want to kind of pop up everything else off the top. And I put five on because we are layering a bunch of stuff on top of it. I'm going to tell you, I saw this card, I cased this card out of the catalog. And I did not see it for the longest time. And then finally I saw it and I was like, oh my gosh, I have to case this card. I changed it, I don't even, I think a tiny bit. I can't even remember right now. And I, my, I told my upline, I'm going to do this card because I'm going to tell them you know, make sure you look through the catalog so you can case it. And, you know, sometimes you don't see stuff right, right off. Then what happens to change the website when the new catalog started? And it's like one of the cards that pops up. So if you think you've seen this before, yep. Um, but I already had it done. <laughs> so, but I just loved it. And I was like, this is such a great card. You know, sometimes I tell you guys that you see a card that you just have to case. All right, so I'm going to put these down first, and I'm going to put this down. So this is what I'm putting down very first, because I just kind of want it in the background. So we're just going to glue right here in a little bit, because it's pretty much going to just lay like right here. Okay, there's a lot of glue on it. That's okay. We're covering it up. We're going to be covering it up with this right now anyway. And I want all the stems to kind of come towards the center. So you just really need a light layer down because we have other stuff layering up, right? All right, so there's that. I'm gonna layer it a little over. All right, and then we're gonna do this one. And we're gonna lay it right about there. So yeah, when you see a card that you want to case, I saw another card somebody posted recently and it was absolutely stunning. And I was like, yep, I have got to make that card because it's so pretty. All right. Sometimes it's funny because you're looking for projects and you're, you know, wanting ideas. And sometimes it, you just see one that you have to make. Like even if I have ideas and I know what I want to do, and you see a card that you love, you're like, I just have to make that. It's a beautiful card, you know, it could be for your sister or anybody, you don't, it's okay. That's why we do our stuff so that um, we give inspiration. All right, so there we go. I'm gonna put that one there. All right, it's all gluing down, but we're also gonna put some stuff on it. All right, so now this one, Again, I'm going to kind of put these towards each other, and we're going to cut, we're going to trim those a little bit, so don't worry about it. Um, but I want a lot of the flowers up. So, see, I did liquid. I'm going to move that up a little bit. I want the one with the hole. I want to see that. So, I'm going to move that up. All right, now this one. Oh, I didn't put glue yet. Our glue holds so well, just a little bit on there is going to be plenty. All right, and then, oops, hello. I, my fingers are sticky. All right, now I gave you some twine. So just um, do whatever you want with it. Sometimes you, if you just do like around your three fingers and just kind of do this, and I like to make my strings go the opposite way. So, you know, you can have, and then you can pull around on them too and get them how you want. You can not do as much string. You can just do this too. I like to do a line. And be careful because these are delicate, but now I have adhesive there. And I want this to stick out here. And then I want this to stick out here. 
Okay, and then you're going to go back like this. So however you want it to where I want both strings sticking out. They don't have to be on the side or down below or up above or whatever. Um, and then you can kind of mess with them after. So I'm going to leave them like that right now. This one's going to lay down once I put my sentiment on. And I'm going to put four dimensionals on here because you really want it to stick. I'm going to actually put five because we're going to hold down that string, hold down those flowers. Everything's going to be held down. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I love anything with Dazzle, of course. Oh, Twilight, I'm so glad you're learning. That is, that is my goal. All right. So here we go. I'm going to lay that down. And now I'm going to try to eyeball it. And get it centered. All right. So there that is. Now down here, I didn't like these sticking up so high. So I just kind of did one a little longer, one a little shorter. And just kind of put them there. You can also... Um, Pick up your tool, stick it under the branch right there if you wanted, you know, whatever. You can just kind of, but this little guy right here sticks up. So what I did is I took a, um, a cut in half, little dimensional, and I just put it right behind this guy right here. And then I just, oops, I didn't, it didn't go right. Right behind this flower. And then I just laid that down. Okay, so it just sticks down a little bit better because it really kind of sticks up. All right, so there we did that. I took one of our birds that's out of stock um, and just put it there, just a little tiny, some little, a little more gold to add. And then I took some of our really pretty um, purple sparkly embellishments. And these are so pretty. They're faceted. They're just so, so pretty. All right. There we go. So, like um, she said, I did I did add the bedazzle. That's what they didn't have. I don't think it had bedazzle. And I just decided, okay, it's got to have bedazzle. If I would have had enough, I would have put it another one behind there. Can you imagine with this die? Um, I love these postage dies, but putting a bedazzle behind here would have just been so pretty. They did a tiny butterfly. Yeah, you know what? I was running out of my, um, my, I don't, I'm needing those dragonflies and um, the butterflies. So I'm just going to put a little tiny bird there, but the butterfly would have been beautiful. Uh, let's see. Oh, thanks you guys. Okay, so somebody. All right, so there we go. Hope you guys love it. Again, add your bedazzle on the inside. It just kind of, you know, brings it all together. And I added just a little up here. You can pull this. It's just two little pieces there. So you can like, you know, let it stick out so you can see it. Or you can pull it in front of your leaf, which is what you probably should do. So you can tell now the leaf's there in the front, but then we added the, the purple, I mean the uh, dazzle to come out in front, which, you know, I like that because I like the dazzle. So anyway, there you go. Oh, absolutely. Case away, case away. I did. Like I said, I think it's on the first page when you jump onto the um, book, but it's also in the catalog. So you can find it there too. But um, use your bedazzle. You got to use it. That's the point of having it, right? That's why it's so beautiful. All right. So Shelly, I think you just purchased um, tonight. If you are on and you want to play bingo, you could, but I need your numbers, but you can only pay, play um, the last games, the ones from now forward. All right. I'm going to move my stuff over here. All right. We're ready for our next bingo. Let me get a little drink here. So Shelly, if you are there, I need your numbers. Oh, thank you so much. I 
right? I know, I love the butterflies too. That's the thing too, is when you start thinking about stuff that if it's been around two years, chances are it's not coming back. Um, for example, the dazzle paper. It's been around a little bit. It was, it was dazzling, uh, be dazzling, or more, and now it's more dazzling. So you want to make sure that you um, get that after me. All right, Shelly, let me write you down here. Shelly, your Christmas card came back. I don't know why, but I just got it today. We were talking yesterday. All right, 3, 9, 24, 27, 28. Oh, bye. Get some rest. Thanks for coming by. Anika, have a good day. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Let me go here and let's zoom back out. Good luck. Make sure everybody's on live chat. Make sure you have your bar at the bottom pulled all the way to the right. And here we go. Number 10. At first, I go a little faster just because, um, oh, you moved. Okay, make sure I have your address. Uh, if you just registered, I'll make sure I have the one you have now. Number 27. And 22. All right, I'll slow down just a bit. So I didn't want to do all Valentine's Day cards because I know not everybody has Valentine's Day, you know, for anybody. So... I, I, but I made some cards that you definitely could turn into Valentine's Day. So just choose your sentiment um, to be whatever you want, of course. All right, lots of bees. Oops, number 11. You know, I was going to redo these numbers because they have the old end colors in, but now that we're almost to the new catalog... <laughs> I'm just going to wait. So I'll, I will do some new ones uh, for the new catalog. Number 16 for the new main catalog. Maybe the new, and I'm, I, maybe I won't do in color so I don't have to keep changing them. Number 28. All right, we have Leslie. Corey, Ellen, Olivia, all with B-I, and Ellen, all B-I. Don't forget, February's bingo is already up. Number 13, just in case, I am looking into doing um, a subscription that can be canceled any time, but that way it's just automatically billed on a certain day. That way I know some people are like, oh, I totally forgot. And so I thought, oh, maybe I'll, I'll try something like that for those that want to. Number six. And then that way on whatever day of the month, the 25th or whatever, it'll automatically come out for the following month. Bingo next month will be on the 21st because Valentine's Day the 14th is on a Wednesday. And I'm also leaving town on the 15th. So uh, we're going to go ahead and do it the following week. Number four. Ellen, B-I-N, Corey, B-I-N, Olivia. Ooh, Corey has a B-I-N-G now. Number three. Keep with the classics you have. Well, I will be for a few months. Will you give us a sneak peek of February bingo? Mm, I might later. I don't always do that um, for bingo, but I might. Carol has a B-I-N. And Shelly, number one. I know there's a lot of team members on here. I just put up a, a color challenge for you guys. Number 23. 
And 21, I'll put this one right there, 21. Leslie B-I-N, Shelly, Carol, Eileen. Twenty-six. I'd like to buy a bee. Oh, good, Barb. Number seventeen. Ellen with B I N G. A few of them. Eileen. Barb, 15. Yay, Jill got her B and a BI. Rosie B I N G number nineteen. Kathy, lots of B I N G's. Twenty five. Robin, is that a bingo? Because you have to put it B-I-N-G-O. I don't know what O-O-O-O means, but let me know. Oh, okay. Number eight. Number eight, Janine has a B-I-N-G, Paula, Ramona, ooh, let me, let me get a good one. Oh, that's okay. I just didn't want to keep putting numbers down and I was reading your thing wrong. 29, 29. pausing because I want to make sure. Oh, Rosie got a bingo. Yay. Congratulations, Rosie. All right, let's take a look at her numbers. Rosie, 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 where are we? Here we are. 3, 15, 21, 27, and 20. Nine. Congratulations, Rosie. Yay. Just a reminder to everybody, maybe the new people, I didn't say this earlier. You can only win one time. And I, mean, I got to write this down. This was bingo number two. And um, you can continue playing if you want, but you just can't win if you've already won bingo. All right, I don't see anybody else. Congratulations, Rosie. Yay! All right, they're going back in. All right, we have card number three. So card number three, again, could be a Valentine's Day card. We're using Sending Love, which is this adorable little mailbox set. It's so cute. I love it. It's got a little bush. It's got grass. You can create your own mailbox. You can also die cut out the stamped one if you want. It's got a lot of really neat things. Look at all the hearts that you have in there. So you've got two sets of clusters of hearts. 
And yes, they cut out all the way, so that's four little hearts each there. You've got two larger hearts. You've got this that cuts out the envelope, or you can create an envelope. Um, you've got a bow, you've got your circle that can cut this out. There's a lot of really cool things in here. Um, you can also create your post for your mailbox, which is what we're doing. So let me show you what we did. And again, you can make it for Valentine's Day, or you could just do like I miss you, like for my grandkids. I thought this would be really nice to just say I miss you. My granddaughter, um, who is nine, well, going to be nine next month, and um, she just loves getting cards. So I thought this would be a really fun card to create. So it does not have to be a Valentine's Day card. All right, Margie, you are behind, so make sure you pull your bar up because when you posted that, we were already done with bingo and starting our card. So especially when you come on late, make sure everybody that you pull your thing over. All right, so project number three, let's put our flowers there. I give you a little tiny brad, um, so don't lose it. Put it in there. Oh, I should tell you guys, I should have said this at the beginning. When you get your bingo, project four is very tall. So be very careful when you open your envelopes, okay? Um, I should have reminded you at the beginning so that in case you're restarting the video, but just I'm um, telling you now, make sure you uh, are careful opening your bingo, okay? All right, so we're gonna have a our mailbox and our post and our envelope, our, our little bush, and we have a little bow. All right, so let's start on the inside. All I did is add the little postage looking strip along the side. So what you're gonna do is take the inside. I'm gonna open that up now. I'm gonna move that up and I'm just gonna stamp on here because, oh, I guess I don't need to because we're not going off the off the grid. I was thinking it goes, it goes off, but it does not. All right, so we're gonna do red for the inside. I like to start with the inside, get it out of the way so I don't accidentally grab this paper for something else. Um, I don't like to take my stamp to my ink pad when it's a bigger stamp. Um, because if I show you, see how you're gonna go off the edge? That's how you get your ink all around the outside. And I try not to do that if I can help it. So I'm just gonna go like this. Your pad is raised, so it shouldn't, your stamp should not hit the edge. So I just kind of go like that. Then I did it sideways. Put your paper on a line. This is either way it's the same. How I see it's angled on the ends, it's gonna be the same. So I went really close to the edge and I just stamped. Okay, so there you go. So you're gonna have your red to go inside. Let me wipe this off. All right, so that's all the red you need. Now we're gonna try and do our circle. I'm gonna bring the black back in because like she said, I am doing it on white on white. It's a little harder. Oh, you know what, let's uh, glue this in. So this is our red that we just stamped. So let's go ahead and adhere this. I did early espresso just to add a little bit of a pop of color. Um, if you can look on the front, I didn't want to do, I did crumb cake for the base. So I just added an early espresso just to kind of give it that little extra color outline there. All right, we're going to just add this on here. So that's the outside. The inside, we're gonna be doing some coloring on this. So we're gonna go ahead and leave our early espresso there, but let's do our stamping here first. And I did it in our black memento. And the hard part is getting this right on the circle. 
again, I used um, one and three quarter circle for the red and one and a half here. Okay, one and three, one and three quarters, one and a half. So that's the circles you'll see listed below. And I normally would stamp first, but we're just gonna go with it, right? Huh? And see what we get. Yeah, that's terrible. See, I have to send the circles with you guys, but um, just because I don't want you, just in case you don't have a circle, I would definitely use your stamp apparatus or something. But I'm going to grab my one and a half inch circle as soon as I can find it. And restamp that because that came out terrible. But I sent it to you just in case you don't have it. That's not going to work. But you can tell my label's kind of wonky on this stamp too. Can you see it? How it's like over to the side. All right, so now. Oh, no problem, Margie. Oh, that's the wrong one. I need one, not two. That's two and a half. I need one and a half. One and a quarter. Here we go. Sorry about that. So if you have circle punches, trust me, do you want to, because uh, see how close that is? That is really close. So you want to stamp first, but I just don't want to not send you the paper. And maybe what I should do is just stamp, send the paper with you for you to stamp on and then cut. Um, because you can always use your circle punches too. I mean, your, your circle dies if you have them. All right. So we're going to add that on here. All right, so there's that. Oh, Renee, if you, um, the way I do them works out really well if the stickers are printed correctly. Um, and I like the way it, it works, but. All right, so you're going to fold it. It gives you the score lines on there already, see them? So it gives you the score lines. So what we're going to do is fold it and then fold it again. All right. I don't necessarily score that because you kind of want to have it that little open look to it. But I score down here because this, this is where we're going to glue. Okay. And so this one, I'm going to that up just a tiny bit. You want it to be flush when you close it. Okay, like that. So, and then your mailbox, go, this part goes on the back. Okay, so you want to have the open part on the front. So I'm going to just add glue here. Anything that has a movement or like this, we're putting something in it. I want to make sure it doesn't open up. Um, so I'm going to add glue except the one thing I just did that I shouldn't have quite yet is I need to add our flag. This is the silver from the gold and silver. And so it does have adhesive on the back, but we're not going to use it. And unless you really try to peel it off, um, it's going to stay on. So don't worry about that. But what I forgot is the brad. So, and I think I did that before too. So funny me. And then we're going to seal that up too. So don't worry about that. We'll do that in a minute. I'm going to add the brad in. I'm going to open it just a tiny bit so I can get it because I'm doing it after the fact. Okay, so now my brad is done and you can put that wherever you want. I'm going to just add a little bit of glue right here. Okay. So now this, this is going to stay closed. And I have these little clips. Okay, so I'm going to leave it like that. And so it just stays closed back there. 
and then this is pretty closed. All right, let's move all of this aside um, and we'll do our envelope in a minute. Let's do our coloring. So what we're going to do is we are going to um, use, you know, for video purposes again, I'm going to use this so I can continue on. I have to worry about cleaning my desk, but don't want to lose my flowers. So what we're going to do is we are going to do a little bit of blending. So I have some of my blending brushes here. We're going to use Balmy Blue as your afternoon and garden green. Okay, so we are going to start the lightest first because I don't want to blend into my green. So let's go ahead and start with our sky first. So I'm going to use Balmy Blue first. I'm going to move this up here. All right, so we're going to start with the lighter. And I'm just going to start off. And of course, for video, I usually kind of go a little faster and not as softly as I should because you don't want to be here all day. So I like to start with the lightest, but I like to add a different color to it just to give it a little bit more texture by having. And see how there's a lot of white in there? Um, I like that because it kind of looks like clouds. So I don't mind it having a lot of white. But I just want a little bit of grass because we're going to have that bush down there. And I want it to just look like it's low grass. If the grass was up higher, it would look like the image is down here and then there's a big background. But see here, it just kind of looks like you're focusing on the mailbox, which I like. So especially because it's so big, you want to look like you're just looking at that right there. Um, where did you get the little clips? You know what? I honestly think that they were in, I want to say they were in a paper pumpkin a long time ago, but I don't remember. But that's my thought because I have silver and gold, but I don't remember. I could have ordered them, but I've had them for years and years, so I really don't know. All right, so we're just going to add and kind of get it to where you want it. All right, so I'm good right there. But now what I want to do is bring in a brighter blue. So I'm going to bring in the um, Afternoon Azure, just to add a little bit. Um, I'm going to go with this one. And then I'm going to just start off again and kind of come in. But see how it's starting to add just that little, that little bit of a darker blue? And I always start off the paper and come back on. I kind of came on a little quick right there, but... And you could really make that a lot darker around the edges if you wanted. Um, sometimes I like to do that. Sometimes I like to do, like I'll do the azure and then I even come in with like night of navy or something and really make it dark or even starry sky or something. All right, so I think that's good, but I'm going to go a little lower. All right, so that's good. I think that's good. And you really can't tell that much, but there is two tones of blue on there. There is, there are two tones of blue. All right, now let's go to Garden Green. And you're just gonna kind of blend in that, um, that bush, like there's grass right there. Okay, I don't like to blend with the blue, so I'm gonna turn this and have a fresh, clean spot here. And then just come up with the green. And because we're doing the paper uh, there, I'm fine with doing just one color of green behind the bush. But I'm going to go a little higher so it just kind of blends so you don't have that white streak right there. All right, that's enough. I think you just need a little bit right there. You can do it darker if you want, but I'm good with just that much right there. All right, so there is that. Okay. So now what I do is I'm going to take my um, 
my grass, my bush here, and we're going to pop it up. So I'm going to do one large dimensional here. And then I'm going to bring in my small ones. And I have some cut pieces right here. Oops, oh, that's partially cut, okay. And sometimes I do, when I cut them, I don't even cut them down the middle. I cut them a little bit to where one side's really thin and then the other side's a little thicker um, because I don't need a whole one right there, but I have plenty of space to put the larger pieces. I'm gonna do a thinner one right there. There we go. Hello, Sassy Stamper. All right, so let's put this right about here. And you can put it all the way down or not, but because it's, you know, kind of just next to the mailbox, it looks okay up because there's grass and then you've got your mailbox, you know, and, there's, and you've got like that little bush right there. And then we're gonna go ahead and let's glue our post wherever you want to put it. You wanna leave yourself enough room for your mailbox, remember. So remember, cause it goes pretty close to the edge there. So you wanna make sure wherever your mailbox is gonna go that you have plenty of room, but, but you don't wanna put your mailbox on yet cause you wanna put this down. Let's put this on our, our um, early espresso now because I've already gl glued that and I probably should have waited because it's got dimensionals on it and I don't like to it gets a little lumpy trying to do it on that I think TV is actually on tonight you guys I think Chicago Med is on that's one of the shows we like to watch. And um, so it's finally on. I think finally TV is going to start coming back, I hope. We started watching The Floor. Do you guys watch The Floor with Rob Lowe? You know, I really watch it because, you know, Rob Lowe. But it's actually a pretty good show. It's a, like a trivia kind of thing. And we like it. All right, so we're going to put that right about there. I'm going to do it with glue just because when my little glue bottle is working, I love it. Sometimes it gets clogged up and you got to kind of clean it out. And If your glue is thick, remember if your glue is thick and you're wanting to put it inside your little bottle, it's going to come out thick. So um, if you have a hard time squeezing it into there, um, then don't use that one. Use a fresh a new glue. Thank you, Twyla, so much. I appreciate that. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and we're going to glue our mailbox down. Make sure you get your the lid to your mailbox down. And the letter is going to pop up, so it makes sense to glue down the mailbox because you're going to have other items, your sentiment and your letter popping up. All right, so there's that. And now your flag, I'm going to put my flag up, but I'm going to put a little dimensional underneath it because I want it to pop, be popped up. It's already popped up because of the mailbox, but I want it to stay like right there. So I'm just going to leave that up there. It kind of fills in that space. All right. Now I'm going to um, get our sentiment. Let's put that on there. Doesn't really matter, but for whatever reason, I like to be like it to go up and down and make sure I have like dimensionals right there. I don't know why. Doesn't really matter. All right, so we're going to just put that right about there. And now our envelope. So we're going to take our little envelope here. 
and we're just going to remember that the pointy is your flap so let's start with this side and that's the flat edge side and then we're going to have this and this and you can score it if you want to um, I didn't because I kind of like that it's like a little fat envelope like it's a package so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put glue on the, the flap here and here you don't need to go all the way up because this is this doesn't close right there and so I'm just going to go a little bit you could even put it on the inside flaps probably a better idea so you know the glue's right there okay and then let's close our little flap there okay and then we're going to put dimensionals on this And it helps, number one, keep them closed, but it makes it puff out out of your mailbox, which is kind of nice. And then this, I recommend using your tweezers. If you guys watched me the other day, remember when I lost my little um, needle, this that goes in my little fine tip glue? I found it. It was stuck to the bottom of my Versamark <laughs> in my drawer. So I don't know when I brought that out but all right we're going to add just a tiny bit of glue on here um, I would recommend with this if you're only going to do a little bit of them maybe put the adhesive sheets on the back but when you do a lot of them sometimes and in mailing sometimes they get stuck on stuff and I don't like to send stuff to you guys that might you know the adhesive might come off and then stick on your projects and then ruin anything so um, and if you're just doing the one it's not a big deal all right so we're going to add this to the package and it's like just barely too long but i like that it looks like it wraps around your package okay so if it's just a little too long that's okay so now I have like some extra little paper slivers right there. All right, so there we go. There's our cute little package. And now we need to bring it in to our mail. We're gonna slide that in there and you want it kind of sticking out. All right, so we're just gonna tap that down. And now we're gonna take our embellishments and we have some pretty little flowers. So I did a larger flower. And you're gonna either get red or the this blush color, um, pale, petal pink. And then you're just gonna put those on here. Wherever you like. And then here I just did the hearts up here in the sky. All right, there you go. That is card number three. I hope you like it. Again, I like doing it that you can turn this into a Valentine's Day card if you like, or you can keep it as a miss you card or thinking of you card or whatever. It's just so cute to uh, do something maybe a little bit different that's not flowers, um, that is could be good for a male or female. It's just really, um, a cute card. I think my grandson and granddaughter would like these. Even though my grandson's in town, little stinker, he goes to pre-K now and he's in sports and he's a busy little guy. And so um, I don't get to see him as often either. So I think I'm going to send them both a card. So really cute, really nice. And you know, it's not a Valentine's Day card. So you can you know, change it up and put whatever sentiment on it you want, but it's just really cute. So, and then I like the little mail postage thingy on the inside. The little, it's not even a scan. I remember those little red and blue uh, envelopes with that on it. So there we go. That is project number three. Lining up behind me here. All right, I'm glad you guys like it. All right, yay, on to our third bingo. 
Is everybody ready? Thank you, Julie. Oh, I'm glad, I'm glad you guys like it. All right, here we go. Good luck, everybody. Number one. Oops, let's do this. <laughs> Might be easier. Number one. So, so far, our first winner was Gianetta. Second winner was Rosie. It's such a cute set, huh, Dana? All right, number one. Number nine. Number 10. Thank you for those that have already registered for February Bingo. I appreciate that. It does help me when you guys register earlier just so that it helps me get my, you know, thoughts on what I'm going to do and how many I need and Oh, good. Good, Shelly. Yeah, kits are nice because you don't have to do all the work. Um, but that being said, it's nice that you guys do register early. It gives me kind of, it's hard for me to do a cutoff date and say, okay, you need to register by such and such a day. I kind of am already trying to plan and do some die cutting because my kits have a lot of die cuts and a lot of pieces in it that it takes me a long time to get everybody's kits going. So I try to kind of guesstimate how many I'm going to have. And that way when cutoff time comes out, that's why I only have maybe just a few left because I have to, you know, I have time to put the kits together. So I appreciate the early registration. Number 19. And that's why I say if you want to do bingo, but you don't, you know, if you can't pay until the last, you know, register, you know, when registration's cut off or whatever, at least I have you on a list and that kind of helps me with my numbers. Just notate it in your notes that you'll pay on, you know, X day. Um, as long as it's before the cutoff, that's really helpful. Number 14. Leslie has a BI already. Number 15. Number 28. I'm only going fast because I'm looking at what everybody's putting and nobody's close to bingo yet. So I like to go a little faster because there's such a big delay. Number 12. Dana, are you going to Houston? Who's going to Houston? I know I have demonstrators on here, so I'm asking. Number 30. If you are going to Houston, please come say hi to me because I don't know what everybody looks like, so I'd love to say hi to you. Number three, um, for those of you that aren't um, demonstrators, we have something called On Stage, and it's kind of like a convention. And this year it's going to be in Houston. Oh, good. I will see you there. Number 29. So, Corey... Dana, Shelly, Crystal, all have B-I-N. Number two. Rosie and Kathy. Oh, Tashana, too bad. 
number 18 next time hopefully yes I do remember Dana I remember when I saw Dana she was like I'm Dana I do your bingos and we started chatting and I was like okay I'll remember her because <laughs> I'm short she's very tall number 21 Tashana hopefully it'll be closer to you next year 16 Kathy has a BIN. Olivia. I know Olivia is going to be in Houston. Gloria, BIN. Ooh, Kathy with a BING. Ooh, lots of BINs. Number eight. Number eight. And Rosie's playing for fun because she's already won once, but look at how close she is. Number 17. Gloria is close. Crystal's close. Twenty-six. Don't forget, I still have my um, first big event with Stamping Up. Can we? Oh yeah. Um, my B class, I still have. And there is a cutest 3D project in there. Number 22. Oh, Renee has bingo. Yay. So Renee has bingo. So Renee's last number is where bingo cuts off. So let's see what Renee's number is. Renee. Nine. Nine. Twelve. Seventeen. Twenty-six and 29 so this is going to be the last number because that was her last number she called bingo congratulations okay somebody else Jill let me see what Jill's numbers were wait okay it's going too fast Woo. Okay, Jill said she had bingo, so let's see. Um, two, eight, nine, 17, and 26. Jill also, Jill, you have um, the consolation prize, so I will send something. Consolation number three. And then, all right, let me scroll back up here. And Renee is bingo number three. You know what's funny is today Jill and Renee both signed up for bingo last minute. Good thing I had some extra kits. Yay. Congratulations, you two. So I have uh, Renee for bingo number three winner. And Jill, you're going to be getting the consolation prize. So I will put something special in your kit. And they're all ready to mail out tomorrow, so um, I just have to seal them up. The good news is, is so far I haven't forgotten anything in the kits. Yay! That is always a great thing. Congratulations. All right, so we'll have one more bingo. We are on to our last number four project. Let's stir these up a little bit. All right, project number four is going to be a calendar item. So you can create this for yourself, create it as a gift, whatever you would like. So here is, let me pull this over a little bit because it's in a bigger bucket because I needed more space for it. There's a lot of punches on this thing. So I saw uh, are you going to Mexico trip? Yes, I sure am. I will be there by the pool. Yes. Thank you. Um, so I saw this calendar. I was trying to find something different and I saw Kelly Atchison made this. Um, I think it was a couple years ago 
and I thought it was kind of cool to have in your in your room. So oh, let me take off my, my all my notes because I'm going to give you guys a little bit of um, measurements on this. I didn't do a PDF. It's not difficult. So make sure you have your pen ready and I'll give you some measurements. Um, but this is what she had and it was a box and then you put your calendars. I only had a 22 one when I did this. So that was my little um, sample one. And so what you do is you uh, put it up like on a shelf, but you get to see three months at a time, which I really like because especially for me when I'm scheduling a class or bingo or whatever, I'm like, oh, what, you know, what Wednesday is, what day am I going to do? And so I thought it was really cool because you could just turn it and you don't throw anything away. So if you wanted to highlight a certain thing or, you know, whatever, you know, you know, what is there so it's really kind of a cool thing and you can flatten it to mail it to somebody now this is why your package when you get into it um it folds and it's really close to this but i've tested like five of them and looked and it will not touch this um, i just have to pull the lid all the way down and it closes on the envelope itself so i thought it was super cool so let's get busy um creating this so i'm going to keep my um screen up so you can see what i'm doing all right, so you're going to get your pieces. So the card bases, you're going to have your card bases, your DSP. And these are bigger envelopes here that I've got everything in. So make sure you don't lose anything. So you have your gems. I'm going to move up these out of the way here. Okay, you're going to have a lot of little gems. You're going to have those. And you're going to have this. All right, so here's your calendar, your 2024 calendar here. So we'll use that. Um, we are gonna start out with this. So you are gonna use this and it's gonna be two pieces, eight and a half by 11. You're gonna score it at four. Oh, so let's think of it this way. You're gonna score it at four and you're gonna score it at eight. Okay, so four and eight. So there's the four already. I had to fold those for you to get them in the envelope and then you're going to do the little at eight because of course these are eight and a half by eleven so there's your half inch okay pretty simple do your do your half inch first and then it's four and four right so easy enough janine are you going to mexico if so, make sure you say hi. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna glue them together. And I like to glue them together and then we'll work on all the pieces um, just because, I don't know why, I just like to glue it all together. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna pull this open. Okay, you're gonna have both of your little pieces on the right side and I'm gonna add glue. And because this is a, oh good, make sure you come say hi. Um, and find me now that you know what I look like. I don't know what you look like. Um, so you're going to go down. Did you go to Norway, Jenny? You're going to um, glue down all the way. And of course, it's because it's a 3D item that you're going to kind of pick up and use. I like to use glue. All right. And then we're going to just line it and go straight up. I really liked this idea because you can see three months at a time. I was super excited when I saw her do this and I was like, ooh, that is what I want to do. All right, so I like to fold them and then make sure that you've got that smooth edge right there, right? And now I'm going to fold this one in. Kind of like a lot of the 3D projects that you do. It's easy that the edges, you just kind of, I don't do the glue too close to the edge, but I do enough to squish it to, so it'll work. And I like to put little squigglies all the way just so it kind of gets everywhere, but not super thick, all right? And so now I'm gonna bring this over. I'm gonna hold this in and fold that down and fold that down. 
And because this one folded in and lined up really nicely, this one should too. All right. All right. All right, there we go. All right, so now look how easy that was. So now what I do is I kind of, and it doesn't really matter because this is going to turn all the time, but this is the raw edge going that way, and then this is the raw edge going this way. But it doesn't really matter because you're going to be turning and flipping this the whole time anyway, so it does not really matter. So we're going to set that aside really quick. The first thing we're going to do is I'm going to show you our, our pieces here. So this one and this one are going to go on one side. And then we have a lighter one and then the floral one on this side. So we're going to start on this side so I can get my stamping done, which I did forget to put these on the stamp. So this one just says sunshine and rainbows. So I'm going to bring out my larger, my filthy dirty block. All right. And then I just did it in black because I really wanted it to show. So I just ink that up really good. Again, I'm taking ink to the stamp because it's a large stamp. And then I'm just going to, I'm going to do the darker on the top because I like seeing all that variegated color. Oh, I'm going to have to stand up because it's a big glare. I'm going to go really close to the top. And you know, I just realized I had sending sunshine only on there. Look at, I did sending sunshine only and I forgot that I didn't do and rainbow. So we're just going to glue right over that because that was my mistake. So don't do that. This is another good reason you guys watch me now and create when you get your kit because silly me, I totally blew that. But that's okay. We, that'll be fine. Um, so what I did there is I uh, stamped just sending sunshine and, and then I wiped off the and, and then make sure you dry it too. So if you're wiping off your stamp, dry that off so it doesn't you know come on your project. But I'm, we're not going to worry about it today. All right. So now what we're going to do is we are going to add these to our project. I almost forgot the stamp, to be honest. I didn't have it on a block or anything. I totally spaced on that. You guys are awesome. Thank you. There's a lot of people signing up for February. I appreciate that. All right, so if you wanted to, you could also add another layer around this if you wanted. So you definitely could, you know, maybe trim it out with the lemon lime twist or something. It's totally up to you, whatever you want to do. And you're going to get a green leafy paper. There was two different ones, I believe, in this kit. Beautiful paper. I mean, in the um, paper pack. Oh, my kitty is wondering why I'm in here. She's like, it's after seven. What are you doing? All right, we're going to put this in here. And I just try to make sure you line up your two DSPs top and bottom the best you can. All right, so there's that one. And then I'm going to go ahead and just flip it while I'm here and add the other one. So we're going to do the light pink here and the floral there. I mean, this is really fairly easy. Your um, pretty peacock pieces are three and a quarter by two and a half. So those are the pieces that you're going to put your calendar on. So tw you need 12 of them, three and a quarter by two and a half. And that's what this, this size is. Okay. So we're going to put this one and the flowers don't really matter. They're both kind of each way. So whatever looks good to you, does it, does it matter? And remember, you want to put your DSP in the middle because it is you're only going to see that one side, right? So at a time. So make sure you try to get that centered. 
I mean, even though some of these other sides are just beautiful, I was afraid it would be really busy if it had this, but you obviously you can use whatever side you want. I'm going to have to do something with this side because I love it. If you guys have an idea of what you want to see in next month's bingo, let me know. Because um, sometimes I'm like, oh, this one or this one. Or, you know, obviously most of the time it's whatever comes to me, whatever I think. Like, oh, okay, I can, I'm going to do this. Or I, I've been wanting to use this or whatever. But sometimes I have, you know, a decision. Like, oh, do I want to use this or this? And I have ideas for both. So if there's something in particular. But like I said, it has to be something that comes to me. <laughs> if it's something that I'm like, okay, I'm... I, I, I could do that, then I will. If it's something that I'm like, you know, sometimes you're just, your mojo just doesn't come. And then I will maybe use that a different time. All right, so I'm gonna do, these are popped up. So you're gonna pop up all 12 of these. Again, this is probably something I could have stuck dimensionals on earlier, but I did pull extra out, so that's good. All right, so we're going to, put them on as quickly as I can. Man cards, okay. Masculine. Yeah, I know Father's Day is gonna be here before you know it. I'm gonna write this down because masculine cards, good idea. All right, there's another one. Oh, my husband, he's in there. If you hear it, he's got his drill going. He's putting a cabinet um, so my white shelf unit that I have in the corner behind me, I'm getting another one put in my room. So he's putting it together. Could always use more storage. It's actually going to be my bingo shelves. My class and bingo shelves. All right, sorry, I should have had this part done. This is the kind of stuff that I usually um, do while I'm watching TV is add dimensions to things, <laughs> dimensionals. I have several projects going on that right now that I need a lot of dimensionals put on, so I won't do it tonight, but probably tomorrow. I hope there's some people here for their first time and they're seeing what bingo is about. And I hope you'll decide to play next month. We always have a good time. I love bingo night. Sometimes I feel like my weekly, during the week normal videos just go by so fast. I don't get to visit and chat with you guys and see what's going on. Oh yeah, that's a beautiful one. Enduring Beauty. I wrote it down. All right, I think one more. All right. There we go. All right, so now what I want to do is I do the, um, the bottom first, okay? I do the bottom first because we're decorating on the top. So let's just do the bottom first. So we're gonna take these off. Don't put your months on first because then you have to worry about where they're gonna go and getting them in order. Let's just put these on first. And we're gonna spread them out. So start on the bottom and go ju up just a little bit so you can still see your, your pretty DSP at the bottom. In fact, I think that's too high. See how I didn't pull those off right there, but I should have. 
but they're just barely on there. All right, so we're gonna go down right about there. So you just wanna leave a little bit at the bottom, just enough to see it, because you wanna give yourself um, plenty of space. All right, slim line. I can definitely do slim line, yep. I like the mini slim lines too. So I'll do one or the other. Oh, thank you, Patsy. We are live, so hopefully you're forwarded to the live, but hopefully you can go back and watch everything else later. My daughter, I told you guys at the beginning, she's still out of power. She's at a friend's house. Um, they ended up driving there, which I think is crazy because it's super... Um, you want to line your calendars up. Even though you're turning them and they're not going to be seen the same, you want it to look nice, so... Okay, there's that one. Uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump to the top. So I'm going to take this, and then you're going to have two butterflies. You're going to have this one and this one. All right? And so I'm going to just curve their little wings just a little bit. I'm just going to do them downward, and then I'm going to do the center like that. All right? And then this one, the same thing. You want to be careful, it is DSP, so it's super fragile. All right, and so let's go ahead and glue those down. Okay, you just need that center right there. And I'm going to do it right about, right about there. Okay, and then the little one, I think I'm just going to do over a little bit. So if you scored it down, you know, like pushed it with your bone fold or whatever, and just kind of push it down. It doesn't have to be crazy. Okay, now I'm going to move these items or cover them up. Cover, cover with something. Because I use Wayne Costella on the butterflies. So I'm going to just, I'm going to do this up here and cover that other stuff at the same time. And you want to make sure you shank your wink Costella. So you want to make sure all that your mica, um, the sparkly stuff is all mixed up. And then I squeeze it not over my project, but just a little bit to get your fluid to come down. Okay. And then I like to use my bone folder and then I just kind of tap on it. And you don't need a whole lot, but, um, See the big spots that landed away from it? I want to make sure that I had enough on my project. And so I think that is fine. So I'm going to move this. So see, it's got a little sparkle on there. So I'm going to move this over and let it dry. It is alcohol dries pretty quickly, but I'm going to let that dry while I am finishing everything else before we put it on. Because we need to add our gems to that. All right, so let's take our dragonflies. And then I'm just going to add them, just offset a tiny bit towards the top, like that. So see how you can see them just offset a little bit. And then you can twist the tail over just a tad too. So I'm going to put glue on the back of this, not all the way to the edge. I'm just down a little bit, a little on the head. And then I'm going to... Go down just a little bit. Okay, so wherever you want it. It's better to start down farther and then move up than it is to start up and then move down because of the glue. You don't want the glue to all be showing. Okay, so I'm going to move this one up just a little bit to have them kind of even on both sides. Okay, so that's good. I don't... I don't um, use my mossing folder to bend that or anything, but I do put regular dimensionals and my minis, if I can find them. Oh, I threw them over where they belong. That's kind of odd. All right, so we're just going to add our dimensionals 
And you can add whatever you want. I gave you what I used. I love this paper. I thought it would be so fun to see it. It's so cheerful all, all year. Um, and I did a little skinny. Remember when I cut those in half, I did some really skinny. So I'm going to put a little skinny one right there. And I'm even going to put a little skinny one on the head, even though I really don't need to, but I'm going to. Ah. So yeah, I just wanted to do something a little bit different for the calendar. And I just thought this was so fun. And you could obviously add Sparkle Wink Stella to this too. The Dragonfly is a punch and it is still available. And the Butterflies, so the Dragonfly is this one. Okay, Dragonfly. And it goes with a sweet. I can't remember which one off the top of my head. And then we have the butterflies. And then the other ones I'm going to be using is the medium daisy. And the bow. And I think this is out of stock right now. Um, I keep all my punches because you might want a project just like this that you don't need stamp set. But, um, but I want the, the project. I'm going to put that, I'm going to wait and add that in a minute. No, I'm going to add that now. The problem is, is you really want to add, get your three pieces in here. Uh, but the most concerning is this because it's so big and then this one and then we kind of do them. Um, so I'm fine with that. We'll just add that now. And then we're going to add this one. I need to put dimensionals on the back. I need to turn the heater down. I think my husband turned the heater on. Or I think it automatically comes on right now, but whew, it is hot in here. So give me one second. I'm usually not in here quite this late. Okay, whew, there, sorry. I love that it's connected to an app. All right, so we're going to add this one. We're back on this side. We're going to add this right up to here. Just leave a little border right there. And if you wanted, you could add dimensionals, you know, back behind the, the butterfly if you, you know, felt like you needed it too, but I don't, I don't feel like you need to. All right, so we're going to do that. That's on that side. Let's go to this side. Let's go ahead and add our bottom two uh, in. Like I said, you could do your calendar ahead of time if you want. It's totally up to you. If you think this is a calendar that you would want to use again, um, and you want to add next year's calendars, and you might want to use some removable uh, tape on there when you add your calendars on. Or like I showed you earlier in the video, you can always take, oh good, Judy, thank you. So the, the bow punch is available again now. Um, you can always use your scissors and take off these panels and add different panels on um, next year. So again, you just want to kind of make sure that this is aligned with the one next to it or as close as possible. Okay. All right. Now we're going to go to this one up here. So we have this. I'm going to add my dimensionals on first because that's. And when I add something on top, I kind of like to add one in the middle. All right, we're going to add our daisies. And so what I like to do, still again, same thing, as I, whoo, as I just do that in the middle to all of them. All right, and then take your bone folder and then just kind of um, this is your second sheet of dimensionals. Uh, the first one was half gone already. So this is my second full sheet. This is a full sheet, yeah. I like to pop things up. I go through a lot of dimensionals. All right, so there's the other one. And then this one. See how I'm just softly doing it. Just let the bone folder do the work. Don't pull it. Just 
you're really sliding your bone folder so if you keep your hands on and then you just move the bone folder so your hands don't really do much okay so there's that you want three because you want it to be nice and full so let's go ahead and glue the first one on again with 3d items i really like to glue so we're going to add that right in the middle and then we're just going to move it around and move this one a little bit okay so they're all just a little bit over and then we're going to take this one and move it yet again so it really looks like a full flower all right and then i just like to kind of squish it and hold it down there all right so then we're going to take the bow and just kind of stick it in there wherever you want to put it it's glued so slide it wherever you want and then we have this the other bow too and this is again is in that silver but um, you don't have to stick the whole thing down if you don't want so what I'm going to do is glue this part like this isn't being mailed or anything so you can be a little more okay so the stem is going down here below the glue and then you can stick this on and I don't I didn't mind sticking it as long as it's because it has adhesive remember and I went ahead and just did the whole thing because you're going to stick it on top of your branch your leaf here okay so there you go there's that now what you want to do is you want to take your uh, one of your large gems okay you're gonna and put it well, okay let's hold on I'll show you that in a second you have to do something else first all right let's go ahead and add this and there's you will receive um, a free gift in your package that you will be using. That's the one thing about bingo is usually I end up having to tell you what it is or you kind of see what it is, but that's okay. Because it's usually something you're gonna use. All right, so there's that. Now, now you can add these. I always do the top. Now, again, you're gonna go, I'm gonna go over my rainbows. It'll be really close, but just cause I screwed up, my fault. And then you center this. Okay, makes sense. So do your bottom first, then go up and do your top, and then you can center this one. Instead of doing this and then doing this, and then you have like a big gap, or you know, it just depends on what, what's going on on your side. So that's what we'll do in just a minute. So we're going to turn this over. We're going to add a large. We got to get our our pieces to have like some kind of a. Bling. So we're going to put a large one and then two small ones. Okay, and then we're going to do a large one. Now I would recommend taking one from the left and one from the right, leaving the center one on your little plastic right there. All right, take the large one, put it on your butterfly, and then take your small one. And you can do your small one and then you can add your small one over here if you want, which I think I'll do this time. Um, I did all three on this one. It's totally up to you. Um, after the fact, I thought about it and thought, oh, you know what? I could put the little one over there. So that's what I'm going to do this time. So whatever you decide. And these are from this, this set here, which I use a lot of. Okay, so... Those are that, all right, so that's that. And now we're gonna come back and you still have this one large one right here. You're gonna pull out your dark, um, I think I did granny apple green. No, I think I did uh, this one, the light lemon twist because that's, that's the color of that paper. And I'm gonna put this because I'm using my alcohol marker 
I'm going to put that right here and I'm going to color this. So now you have a little piece of your plastic to hold. That's why I said leave one gem, uh, take one from the left and one from the right so that you can have a little wiggle room here to color. All right, so now we're going to put that pretty little green right in the center of our daisy. Barb, you're probably right. I probably could have done that. Well, I, it would have to have been up a bit because it's going to not cover that up, but that would have been a lot better than what I'm doing, but that's okay. That was a good idea. All right, so there we go. When you're on screen, it seems like those great ideas just do not come. <laughs> All right. But we're going to make it work because I'm going to put it right below the rainbows. Okay, so let's do this. And so I'm going to go right to the bottom of the rainbow so I can use this again. All right, we're just going to, so if you mess up like me, then we'll try it this way. Right now you can kind of go in the center. All right. Walk over here. And you could have, I think you could have probably put that, it's kind of big for a label, but when I created this, we didn't have the, um, that thoughtful expressions. That might have worked, but it's kind of big. All right, so we're going to come back over here and kind of stick my head in and line it if I can. All right. All right, but I think this is a really kind of a cool gift idea. So not only are you kind of centering here, but you're kind of, you know, looking that way too. All right. And now this is where it's going to be harder to align. Back here, it's about right here, which is fine. So I'm just, I mean, it's, like I said, it's not going to be exact and you could measure it if you wanted, but I'm not that, it doesn't have to be exact. All right. All right. So, so far I have a slim line and masculine and enduring beauty. Right, here we go. And you can, of course, use whatever little tops you want to do. I wanted to do something that um, if you recreate it, especially if you're going to do gifts or whatever, you can use punches if you have them. If you don't, use whatever you have. All right. I really appreciate all you guys watching and playing. I hope you play next month. We always have fun. And thank you so much for the thumbs up. All right, there we go. All right, so now there it is. So there's all our sides. And so um, I'm going to, it doesn't really matter where you start. So let's just start here and where's my calendar okay so you can choose to do um, adhesive tape you could use glue dots if you wanted whatever you think that you know would work for you so let's start here um, I, I think I'm gonna do glue dots one any no I'm not I'm going to use adhesive. 
Oh, except this one's running out. All right. Because I would probably take the panels off. Well, let's be honest. I would probably recreate another one. And that way um, I can use the new updated current DSP because that's what I like to do. There we go. January. And you guys don't have to sit here and watch me put all these on. I'll just put the first ones. Because pretty, pretty self-explanatory. However you decide you want to add them on. But I like the idea of seeing three months at a time. There we go. And I like that it looks good. I, I would, I've almost thought about using glue, but because this is just like copy paper, you don't want it to get all bubbly and weird. And um, so the seal is probably your best bet or even glue dots, but still over the year, it might, you know, your heater's on or whatever. And it might kind of start bubbling in the middle or something just because glue dots are kind of weird. But anyway, and there you go. So you can just set that up somewhere up on a shelf. You can mail it to somebody. Um, so uh, yeah, I thought that she had a really clever idea when she did that. And I gosh, I wish I would have remembered when she did it. But it was several years ago, I think. And so I just thought it was super smart and a great different way to have a calendar and you can just see all three months at one time and then you turn it and it's like you have a whole new calendar. Um, my desk is full, full of craft stuff. So trying to um, create something that's gonna sit right here on my desk was probably not the best idea because it's pretty messy. So I'm afraid my calendar would get lost. And pushed aside so anyway I hope you guys like that and are ready to win some bingo we have one more bingo is everybody ready good luck and I'll then after um, after our last bingo, I'll show, well, you know what, let me just show, because I know a lot of people are, aren't going to stay around, so let me just show you really quickly, um, and then if you're recreating these, you can just look at these really quick before you um, head off, if you're done, you don't have to hang out for me showing the last bingo. So there were our cards for bingo, and the calendar we just created. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you so much for participating. For those of you that watch, thank you for watching. And I hope I see you at next month's bingo. All right. Here we go. Oh, they're in front of me. I'm like, oh no, where did they go? Oh, thank you, Robin. You're welcome, Judy. Number two. Thank you, Sassy Stamper. I appreciate that. Oh, good. I'm glad, Shelly. Number nine. Jill is on the board already. Number four, and Olivia, 22. So for the, uh, those that are new watching, I, I hope you, it seems to be like you're doing just fine playing bingo and you're understanding everything, so that's great. Number three. So for those that have won, don't forget, message me your order. And don't forget, it needs to be in this month, number 23. So it needs to be to me. I have to be able to put it in during January. 
Oh, you are so welcome. All right, we see B.I.'s already. 21. Number 30. If you're considering joining Stamping Up or have thought about it or have questions about it, and if you don't have somebody to join under, I would love to have you on my team. We have a great team. I have a lot. Uh, in fact, most of my people are hobbyists. They just want their discount, number 27, and that is perfectly fine. That is how I started, and that is a smart move. Eileen, B-I-N-G already. Number one. Good night, Tashana. Have a good week. Number 10. It's just like having a coupon and shopping. And if you join now, you have until the end of July, which means you'll get early access to the new big catalog in April that comes out in May. Number seven, B-I-N-G for Leslie. It's worth giving it a try. Number 11, Ellen's on the board with the B, Angela with B-I-N-G. Dig into the bottom. Number 12. All right, we have a few B-I-N-Gs. Gloria, Barb, Angela, Leslie, number five. Angela has bingo. Woo, woo, woo. Let's take a look. Angela has three, seven, twelve. 21 and 23. Angela, congratulations. All right, Angela, number four bingo winner. Congratulations to all the winners. Yay. I don't see any others. Oh, Leslie, hold on, Leslie. Hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I didn't see yours. You snuck in there. All right, Leslie. All right, we have... Shoot. All right, I'm looking. One... Five, nine, twenty-two, 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 and twenty-seven. All right, Leslie. Leslie will get a consolation prize on game number four. Yay! Thank you, everybody, for about the thumbs up. I do really appreciate that. Twyla, thank you so much for, for giving. I appreciate that. Yes, thank you to all of the winners. I hope you guys had a good time. I hope you guys liked the projects. I hope you case them and create extra. Look at me. My top is just falling here. Okay. I, you know what's funny? I put this top on and I was like, I think my hanger left like weird marks right here. And so it's been bothering me like, but I put it on right before the video. And then I was like, I should have changed it. And now I got stuff showing. Sorry. Um, oh, good. Thank you. I'm glad you guys liked it. You are so welcome. 
So um, I hope you guys had a great time. I hope you do join me for uh, February's Bingo. Again, if you're interested in joining Stamping Up, if you have any questions about it, um, any thoughts about it, let me know. Give it a try. You can um, try through July, see how it works for you. You get to purchase early from the new main catalog. And um, we have a great team. And if, it, if you decide it's not for you, then you go back to being a customer. So um, it's easy to give it a try. And now is the best time because you have a lot of time to come up with your first quota. You do not have to come up until the end of uh, July. June, really, July is a grace period month. Oh, you're welcome. I will see you in Mexico for sure, Janine. Had a wonderful time and signed up for February. Thank you, Carol. Thanks, Katie. Good, Paula. I'm glad you liked it. Oh, I'm glad you're back, Kathy. I'm glad I'm back. I'm glad we had bingo. I missed it. Thank you guys for joining, um, uh, signing up for February. Thanks for joining me. I hope you enjoy the projects. I will see you on Sunday. Uh, Wednesday is up in the air. I will let you know more about that on Sunday. Have a great rest of your week. Bye, everybody.